you are hereby pardoned. An annual Thanksgiving tradition as President Trump formally pardons a turkey and jokingly says he considered repudiating those pardons given during the Obama era. Tater and Tots pardons cannot under any circumstances be revoked. But the very real process of repealing past legislation is no laughing matter. The latest move against rules guaranteeing what is called net neutrality, put in place by the Obama administration in 2015. These rules acknowledge the internet was an essential utility, like water or electricity, prohibiting the big providers from manipulating access to it in their own interest. For example, Verizon deliberately slowed down Netflix to promote its own content providers until it was stopped by the FCC, a body that may now reverse that decision. Broadband internet providers should not be allowed to pick and choose which pieces of the internet they want to deliver to your house or who gets to reach your computer faster than who else. Imagine paying for a premium version of Facebook or a premium version of YouTube. Um, all of the stuff that we kind of whip at our phones and tablets and laptops and just kind of take for granted as free services are either going to get worse or more expensive or both without net neutrality. The FCC chair, Ajit Pai, argues that removing the restrictions would create a more competitive environment in which consumers could demand greater transparency by providers in choosing a plan that's best for them. The decision to go ahead will be taken by simple majority at an FCC meeting in mid-December. The board put together in recent months consists of three Republicans and two Democrats. The votes expected to go along party lines, three in favor and two against. And while it won't rescind pardons for turkeys, the Trump administration has the power and intent to pass a death sentence on the Obama era concept of unfettered individual access to the internet. Net neutrality, it's a seemingly complicated hot button term, but it's actually based on a pretty simple philosophy, that everything on the internet should be treated equally. Broadband providers shouldn't be able to decide which websites to block or to slow down. Let's look at an example. I pay for cable and internet through a service provider. So when I go online, I expect to be able to watch all the GOAT videos my heart desires. <coughs> and when I go on Netflix, I expect to be able to binge House of Cards without any interruptions in service. But without net neutrality, there's nothing stopping my service provider from simply blocking websites or slowing down the streaming speeds of websites like Netflix. And it's already happened. In 2007, Verizon blocked text messages from a pro-choice abortion rights group. Verizon said they had the right to prevent consumers' access to any groups the company might deem controversial or unsavory, though they quickly backtracked. And just last year, Comcast slowed Netflix's streaming speeds until Netflix paid for smoother streaming. Netflix accounts for more than 30% of internet streaming, and Comcast believed that they should be accountable for some of the infrastructure upgrade costs. In February, when Netflix paid up, speeds went back up, as you can see here in the red line. Here's an analogy. Let's say FedEx wants Amazon to give them money because Amazon packages take up a large portion of their shipments, and FedEx thinks that they should chip in for their truck repairs. To pressure Amazon, FedEx slows down their delivery time, but the consumer is the one who paid for the two-day shipping in the first place, and the consumer is the one hurt by having her packages delayed. The FCC wants to establish clear rules to make sure that broadband providers can't do this. They plan to define the internet providers as common carriers under Title II of the Communications Act. Companies regulated under Title II can't discriminate what services they're providing to the consumer. It's why FedEx can't discriminate against Amazon deliveries. Democrats and President Obama strongly support these regulations. Many Republicans in the broadband industry see it as more unnecessary government oversight. They worry the regulations will prevent innovation and growth. The thinking goes, if AT&T and Comcast are required to let anyone use their lines for free, why would they spend billions of dollars building them in the first place? They also see the free market as a solution. If you don't like Comcast slowing your Netflix, switch to Verizon. The sticking point there is the majority of American consumers currently only have one provider of high-speed internet service to choose from. The debate will likely continue after the FCC rules on this, February 26th. Well, this week, an FCC hearing here in D.C. got a little out of control as two protesters disrupted. Commissioner Pye, can't you see? Americans want net neutrality! 85% of Republican voters want net neutrality! Stop representing telecoms! Represent! Why? Well, those protesters
officers. We showed you this earlier this week, trying to interrupt the testimony of Republican FCC Commissioner Asia Pai. Pai says that the Obama administration's attempt to regulate the internet as a public utility is bad for the web. Tonight, he'll be the guest on Politicking with Larry King. Here's a preview. But many consumer activists, they side with Google, Facebook, Netflix, and Amazon, all of whom support, uh, support net neutrality. How do you explain that? Well, I'm an avid consumer of all those services. What I can tell you, both as a consumer and as a commissioner, is that I want a free and open internet. Most people do. And over the past couple of decades, the internet has been exactly that. In fact, what is striking about this 332-page document is that nowhere does the FCC identify any harms that have occurred. There's no actual problem that's identified here that needs to be solved. There's a lot of talk about hypotheticals. And in my view, if the internet has been a bipartisan success story for the past two decades, we should preserve that and build on that and give people more broadband options, not try to solve a regulatory problem that simply doesn't exist. Mr. Pai, if our goal is to encourage domestic investment, buy uh, and, and promote competition between internet service providers in the United States, shouldn't we return to the uh, Clinton era uh, light touch approach to the internet? Uh, that, Senator, that is what the FCC has, approved, uh, has proposed, and our goals here, of course, are to preserve the free and open internet that all of us cherish, and to promote the massive infrastructure and the investment that is necessary to connect rural and urban Americans alike with digital opportunity, and that's what we're exploring in the context of the current proceeding. The system is working, yet, Mr. Chairman, you're proposing to undo the open internet order. Uh, what is the problem, Mr. Chairman, that you are trying to fix? Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, I think one of the concerns that uh, we have raised is that these regulations might be dampening infrastructure investment. They and might be, but there's no evidence of it. Well, there has been evidence raised, and that's part of the reason why we are testing this proposition in the context of the notice of proposed rulemaking. Some had suggested the FCC should simply issue a declaratory ruling, saying that the facts in the law are so, and that's the way it's going to be. But we wanted to test this proposition in an open and public process. I, I think that the arguments I heard are, are not enough. Uh, I don't believe this is a, a left versus right issue or a Trump versus Democrats issue. Uh, I think that network neutrality helps, benefits, not only consumers, but the vast majority of businesses. Net neutrality does not benefit the telecom providers, the cable providers, but it does benefit everybody else in business. Now, what the telecom companies and the cable companies want is to collect money from people who are sending you information, like people like Amazon or Microsoft, and reorder it if Microsoft or Amazon pays them money. So if Amazon pays the money, its information is going to come to you first. If Microsoft pays the money, Microsoft's information is going to come first. The big internet and telecom companies, uh, well, sorry, I should say the big telecom and wireless companies, uh, that's AT&T, that's Verizon, that's Comcast, uh, T-Mobile and Sprint, at least on the edges of that, seem to be apparent winners. Uh, the losers, uh, big users of broadband, Netflix, uh, Facebook, Google, uh, gaming companies like uh, Activision, the battle over net neutrality is back in the spotlight this week as the FCC prepares to vote on loosening regulations. Many on the left are up in arms, but a new poll this morning reveals that 51% of Americans believe the internet should not be regulated by the government. Yeah, one of the last uh, free spaces on earth. So why are leftist groups protesting the chairman in his own neighborhood, in his backyard, in his front yard, with more protests planned outside his home today? The chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, Ajit Pai joins us now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, so first, these protests. They're outside your house, in your neighborhood, plastering flyers on your, on your neighbor's uh, doors as well. Why, why are they doing this? Well, I think this is an important issue and people feel very passionately about it. And so this particular group uh, felt the need to let my neighbors know what they thought as well. And look, it's a free country, but at the end of the day, I'm going to stay focused on the facts and try to be as civil as I can be to every American who's involved in the debate. They've been putting door hangers on your neighbor's houses with uh, things that say, have you seen this man? Have any neighbors come up to you about this? 
A few of them have, and uh, they got a laugh out of it. So, yeah, we actually have seen him. We just talked to him the other day as he was mowing uh, the lawn, and uh, you know, they've had a pretty good sense of humor about it. And uh, whether they agree or not on any particular FCC issue, they've been really supportive. And so I really am grateful to them for their friendship and uh, their uh, wisdom. Well, you're not getting a lot of friendship from leftists like John Oliver, the, the, the uh, disciple of the former Daily Show. Uh, he's every week uh, bringing up this issue, telling people to go to the, the website, go, go to your home. Uh, what's it like and complain? What's it like to be under the spotlight like that? Uh, it's a change of pace, uh, to be sure, but at the end of the day, I really want to uh, make sure that every American who has an interest in this issue uh, has his or her say, and that's the uh, basic purpose of the FCC, is to open a public conversation, and uh, if they want to participate in the conversation, we're more than happy to engage them. Well, it seems like the left, and, and not necessarily just those on the left, but uh, small business owners and others have kind of maybe owned this conversation and forcing maybe the right to play defense on this. Their argument is that hey, if there's a small store, a small business, up against some big business, they should have an equal right to internet access, just like the big business does, so that their speeds aren't slower, they have access to the same things. How do you battle, are you up against that argument, and is that a fair assessment? Well, I think the basic framing of this issue is wrong. The essential question is, how do you want the Internet to be governed? Do you want it to be heavily regulated by government lawyers as a slow-moving utility? Or do you want light-touch regulation so that we get more investment in the networks, and more innovation online, more consumers benefiting uh, from the digital economy? I tend to take the latter view, as did President Clinton, as did President Bush, as did President Obama during the first six years of his tenure. And so all we're proposing to do is return to that light touch market based regulation that has served consumers in the, across the country so well for almost 20 years. If you had a situation where here's the argument right that you have for instance Comcast which owns Hulu which owns NBC right and one night you're surfing through the internet and you want to watch Hulu and it loads like that because Comcast owns it and it makes it fast. You want to jump over to Netflix they don't own it it's slow. If something like that were to happen where would the FCC come down? Two different points. First and foremost, that does not happen, has not happened in the digital economy that we've had. Second of all, if it did happen, if we saw an example of any kind of anti-competitive conduct, that is squarely something that the antitrust authorities at the Federal Trade Commission or the Justice Department hmm. are empowered to take action on. And that's the last thing we want to see, of course, is any competitive conduct. Sure. And, of course, in a capitalist country, you can uh, change the channel or go to a different service if you want to in a free economy. Correct.